What was it about the world of, of TS Spivet that just attracted you both to this project? And uh, I think in the first time it was the emotion, because probably the most emotional film I have ever made. But this, in, in a second, I, I, I should say uh, the 3D, because the, in the book, it was full of sketches, you know, made by the hero, and I immediately I thought, oh my god, it would be great floating in the air for the 3D. And the opportunity to shoot the nature, it was something new for me, the big American landscapes, the train, you know, the freight trains, and also to shoot in English, to change, so it was an opportunity to meet interesting people. And uh, the casting was new, I did not know anybody, it was in Canada, and I met interesting new people. Because uh, I mean, it, the film carries that very quirky kind of European whimsicality that you have in, in your movies, and yet the film's got really delves into kind of American culture. You've got a character who wants to be a cowboy or yeah. lives like a cowboy, mm -hmm. and the beauty pageants. Was it quite difficult for you to sort of remain faithful to your own tone and yet explore another culture? No, at the same we, time? no, no. In France, uh, we we love American cinema, and it was a real feeling to to show the American you know, spirit. But uh, there is something very important. It's a French and Canadian co-production. It means I kept the freedom. It's not an, an American movie. It's a fake American movie with the freedom. It's very important for me to keep the freedom. I am completely responsible about every details in all my films. And to Helena, of course, the, the film is very vibrant, very stylistic. Do you get a sense for that when you're shooting the movie? Or, or do you, is that literally just sort of a surprise to you when you watch the finished product? Um, well, actually, you know, it's the first time I've ever been given the film in storyboard. Like, just before we started shooting, he said, do you want it or are you going to be off put because some, some, some actors don't like it? He literally gave me the film there. I was like, Jesus. And it was literally storyboard. Every single bit was storyboarded. But he also reassured me that if we came to a, you know, a set and I suddenly thought, actually, I don't want to sit there. I want to sit there. Yeah, he'd be mm. fine with that. So it was very, very specifically... Um, I knew... The wonderful thing about working with somebody who's got a vision is that you know which world you're going to be stepping in. So you know you can just trust that. And I, I also have just always so loved being, loved watching his world. So for me it was such a privilege thinking, I'm going to be inhabiting it. So you're aware in the sense of the colours, and the, but he's very, very precise. And because he's so precise, you always, you always know when somebody knows what they're doing because they tell you exactly what to do. So. And at the same time, it's very free. He just said, okay, I'll turn the camera on, you know, start acting. He didn't even say action sometimes. <laughs> and he went, you want to stop? He said, yeah, I'll stop now. <laughs> and Because, I mean, obviously it's based on the Reef Larson novel. I was wondering if you've read it. And do you find it helpful to read novels that films are based on? Or do you prefer to go in sometimes, sort of unaware? No, 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 I read everything. I mean, I, I just do as much as I can, anything that's available to me. Mm -hmm. But I, I definitely read the book, because then they, mm -hmm. you have much more you know, facts and, I mean, there was a lot, Dr. Clare's very different from the book because, of course, a lot of the book is, there's a whole chapter, I think, from Dr. Clare, a whole section of the book, you know, yeah. written by, but it's very, very different. But the sketches and the sentiments and, no, I read the book, I've got a, and I've crawled, scrawled all over my version at home, so, and I love that book and the sensibility of the book and the film as the same, yeah. but it's not directly translated because otherwise we'd still be here yeah. watching it. Especially the last part, we rewrote the last part because the mother disappeared in the book. I, I called Ref Larson, I said, what's the problem with your mother? He said, I have to think, I have to, <laughs> <laughs> to, to see a shrink. But, uh, and I remember him telling me not to read it before he'd written the script. Yeah. Because I said, because we met way yeah. before he actually read, finished the script or read, and he said, but don't read the book. And I was so, I did actually. Oh. <laughs> but I wasn't depressed because I knew that it was going to be different. But, you know. Where is the mother? Yeah, no. And I, I read though, Jean Pierre, that you said that uh, T.S. Spivet is a character that you saw a lot of yourself in. Mm -hmm. and I was wondering what you can identify with him, and Helen also, do, can you relate to him in a, more in a sense from the shunning away from the fame and the, that kind of side to, to the movie? I, would, I mean, I relate to him not in the shunning away from fame, but. I guess I do love, and I've got a similar thing, is that a lot of the time I'll see something and I'll analyse it and think, oh, what well, that's interesting. And um, so I've got a, a similar, not quite as developed as him, and he's a genius. But I'm not scientific in my head, but I'm more creative. So often I'll see something and be like, oh, I wonder, you know, I love all his diagrams and his sketches. And I also love scrapbooks myself, so I'm always making sketches. And, and I love putting just different it's collages and the way we think. And anyway, so in that way I relate to him. Um. For me, it's uh, one, one of the time, one of the story about a, a kid fighting against a monster. This monster in this film is the guild, 
and uh, it's a story of all my film and maybe it's uh, my own story I had to fight to quit my world I was a worker at the telephone company when I was a teenager in France I worked for years not for vacation you know <laughs> and, uh, no, no, really and I quit and I, I, now I am a director it's a, a beautiful life <laughs> uh, so just finally I mean Kyle was fantastic in the lead role and I mean the character is someone that's very mature and almost sort of above his own years was that the similar case for Kyle as a, as a person as well was he quite was he just so mature and was he quite similar to T.S. himself? Uh, you speak about Kai. Yes. yes. Yeah. Kai is exactly like T.S. Spirit. He's a kind of genius, yeah, really. He speaks five languages. He's interested about everything on the set, the sound, the picture, everything. He, he needs to understand everything. He is never tired. I saw him crying one time because he lost a cricket. <laughs> and I, I thought he was playing. He was acting. No, no, it was a real you know, pain. And it was the only time. He's always courageous. He wants to make the stunt himself. He's, he's a great kid. And, uh, and you know, for the speech, five pages of, of dialogues, two takes. Perfect. He, he is able to cry on command very well for a kid. No, he's a great kid. Well, he, he wants to be a director. <laughs> and he will be, I'm sure. After he's, he's a president. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you so much for your time today. Much appreciated. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers.